Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Talk to you, but you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Right, uh, today we're joined by Chris from Wigan. How are you doing, Chris? How are you doing, mate? You all right? You a hardcore or a, ca or a casual, Chris? I'd say I'm close to being a hardcore. I try my best. Well, I try my best. Well, let's see if you pass the porky test today, eh? Yeah, mate, let's go yeah. for it. You've probably got a few things jotted down that you want to uh, speak about, so the floor's all yours. Fire away, Chris. Um, first thing I want to talk about, mate, is it's quite fresh because um, it only happened last night, but it's um, the Kovalev failed drug test. And it's it's again, it's another elite fighter at world level failing drug test. What do you think about it, uh, Russ? What's your thoughts on it? Do you know what? I always suspected, but because there's no proof... <laughs> You can't you can't go out go around damaging a man's character. But I always thought that people like that they had freakish power. I mean freakish. And what other fighters do we see nowadays from behind the Iron Curtain that have got freakish power? Well, Golovkin's had freakish power years, years. Yeah. We're not saying we're not saying that he's juicing or anything like that or taking performance enhancing drugs. But when when people are punching that hard. There's, 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 there's some. Is it natural or what? I don't know. It, it ruins sport, doesn't it? I, I personally think, and I, I'm of the opinion that think things need to be done. They need to make an example out of somebody. But he's made his millions and is at the end of his career, so it doesn't matter now. But if he's been juicing all his career, it's tainted, isn't it? I mean, we say best fighter in the world is Canelo at the moment, but he's failed the dope test, hasn't he? You know, yeah. we need the. Mate, yeah. We need the sport to be clean, but uh, it's disappointing uh, that he's failed it because I did like him, but I always suspected it. And I think it's probably rife in the sport and it gets swept away. That You'll get a few do-gooders coming out saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but people just bury their heads in sands. And don't forget Kovalev. Did he kill somebody? Yeah, yeah. Seriously, yeah. But he didn't, eh? I think he killed somebody in the ring. Yeah. And not what were the testing that day? I don't know, but his his legacy now is tainted. He's spoiled himself now, I think, and uh, I think it's a shame. And I think he should be banned. He should have that. He should be finished. Run, run out of the sport now, because like I said, he's already killed somebody, and I think that should be there should be an inquest into that death. I, if I think he did, I, I'm not 100 percent sure if he killed somebody. I think he did. I think somebody died, didn't they? Yeah, Earlier in his career, before he fought cleverly, he killed someone, didn't he? Ring, and I think that there should be an inquest into that. And were the dope testing when that when that uh, happened? Uh, that's that's what I'd like to see. And Nathan cleverly must be sat at home now, thinking, would he dope him when he knocked me out? Does he not him out? Yeah. Not knock him out? He ruined him. But what he yeah, did, man, right, yeah. I don't know. I think it's bad. Bad foot sport. What do you think? Yeah, it's not good, mate. I, 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 I have to agree with you hundred percent on what you said there. And it's like, you look at it like people like Canelo, and you can like they always got an excuse, aren't they, at world level? Or it's like, oh, it's me, or it's this. Um, my brother spiked me drink or something. You know what I mean? They've always got an excuse. But the way I look at it is, they need to make an example out of somebody like like um, Canelo, for example. They should have made an example out of him. Or like say Fury, they should have made an example out of these fellas. I mean, just because the big fighters, they're not going to though, are they? They're not. They're, gonna, they're not going to be seen oh. to punish them because they're too busy making a few quid, aren't they? You know what I mean? Like Canelo, he makes that much money and that much revenue. They're not going to stop him doing that because obviously they're getting paid as well, aren't they? Yeah. So it's disgusting what goes on. I mean, I'm a big um, like I'm a proper against like drug to like people taking drugs in the sport. Like I think it should be a clean sport, level playing field, but. Yeah. It just it doesn't seem that way, mate. I think everybody at the top, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I think everybody at the top is on some sort of thing. I mean, I'm not saying they're, they're all at it, but I think the majority of them are, and they get away with it. Um, I don't know if that's because they cycle it well, um, if the people are taking backhanders, but that's just the way I look at it. Um, what, what's going on with the drug testing at the minute? Yeah, so I don't, yeah. Um, what's going on with the drug testing at the minute? Uh, is people getting tested over here in the UK because AJ's just had a fight, and normally when AJ has a fight, it's all over social media. Oh, I've just done me my third uh, third drug test of the week. This and that. This and that. And there was nothing. You know what I mean, mate. And what's going on? You know what I mean. I mean, obviously, this is an American issue. It's a Vada issue. 
Um, but is it is it are they tested them over here as well? That that's what I want to know. And if they are, um, why are people not getting busted? Because there's obviously people out there who have been in trouble. Take Dylan White for example. Like we have the A to A to A sample and the B sample, and all it is is you we in one cup and then you we in the other. So if if the A sample is positive, then the B sample is going to be positive as well. But for some reason, we're like what. 500 days on and we've still not heard anything. It's just got all covered up with lawyers and this and that. And Eddie Earn coming out, we're going, well, it's legal issues. It's We can't disclose it, this and that. But why have they not come out and just cleared his name? It's just sort of been swept under the rug. And I don't know, it just, for me, it just, it leaves a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Like, how can you look at Dillian White the same after that? You can't really, can you? It's tainted him. Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say, they don't wee in two cups. They wee in one cup. Well, yeah, wait, yeah, sorry, mate. Then they pour it into two tubes. They have an A and a B. That's, That's how it mate. works. And uh, it's quite expensive to have them come come up to shows and that. It's, uh, I think it's just over a £1,000, about £1,100. They've got to be put up in hotels and that as well. And I think, I'm not sure on this, but I don't, I think they're not going to be doing as much drug testing because they, nobody can get about, can they? And there's all this quarantine. No. So I don't know, but getting back to Anthony Joshua, uh, did did he have a TUI uh, certificate? So yeah, mate. Oh, yeah, he got prescribed it to him, didn't he? Yeah. So Joshua's allowed steroids in his body, but it's because it's doctor subscribed that prescribed it and it's not performance enhancing drugs. Well, what is it then? So he's not natural then, is he? No. It's not. It reminds Sorry, Ross. Well, no, no. I'm saying. I, I was just going to say it's not. It's not uh, fair for everybody else that Joshua gets an exemption certificate for having that in his body, but he, he's the cash cow, isn't he? So nobody's going to rock his little boat like Canelo. They give him a six month ban, but he has a six month break in between fights. Anyway, he fights September and May, doesn't he? Or yeah, that's like, it. Exactly. Think Cody Mayo, is it May? And then he fights. He fights six. Yeah, months he fights months. at the Mexican weekend. Yeah. So and that's like October. It's like November time, that mate. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Cinco de Mayo is in May, isn't it? Yeah, May. Yeah, and, and, and then he fights at the back end of the year, twice yeah. a year normally. But so it's about think, six, about six months of the gap in between. If they give Canelo a six month ban, well, it, and backdate it, he, he has a six month minimum, six seven month break anyway. So they didn't really do anything, did they? No ban. Slap on, really, mate. Slap on rest. Look at Liam Cameron. He got a four that's year ban for a line of coke. Uh, whether he did it or not, I don't know. In his system, he got four years for one charge. And he were a Commonwealth champion, IBF rank number 12. Tyson Fury had a coke, uh, a Nandrolone charge. Then he had a cocaine charge. And then they came to the gym and they said they're testing you again because the Klitschko fight were back on and that. And he told them to F off, said they were persecuting him because he were a traveller and all that. So he had a refusal. So Nandalone cocaine and then a refusal. Three separate charges carries a 12-year ban. He got a two-year backdated ban. Right? Backdated. Yeah. Now, uh, how can that be? How can Liam Cameron get four year for one charge and Tyson Fury get two year for three charges? I don't That's get great. that. I don't get that. Disgraceful, mate. I agree with you. I mean, I'm a big Tyson fan. Like, I really do like Tyson. I met him a few times because he, he's normally around the area. Like, do you know, like Bolton, because I live near Bolton as well. Yeah. Um, but I have seen him a few times and met him a few times. He's a nice guy. I get on really well with him when I've seen him. But it's it's not right, mate. You know what I mean? It needs to be a level playing field, especially when you've got something like Nandrome, which is classed as a steroid, and then you've got something like cocaine with Liam Cameron. You never know, mate. Like, there should be something where it's like a recreational drug. You shouldn't get much as because like cocaine, realistic. What's cocaine going to do to help enhance your performance? As they would say, well, it's not going to do. It. Well, cocaine, right? If you're taking cocaine, you're not eating, are you? So if you're into fight week and you want to get down to a certain weight and you're starving, if you have a little bit of coke, it takes that hunger pain away. Like, maybe yeah. maybe, fight, maybe fighters might have been do, doing it for that because they're struggling in fight week. I don't know, but. I don't. It just doesn't, it doesn't make you don't say it makes sense to me, mate, at all. Um, especially that I like I say when you got Tyson that had three three issues, you've got somebody like Joshua who's been prescribed it, yeah, and then you've got somebody like Dylan White and it's been swept under the rug. Like, what's going on? Is it is there these people like the fighters like these guys who are making the money? These untouchable, but somebody like Liam Cameron, you know, somebody who's not at the big time just yet on his way up. Is is that some? Is that you know what I mean? Why why make an example out of him? 
you know what I mean? That's what happened. That's what it's wrong, mate. I, I really do. Nobody's been done for cocaine, have they, since Liam Cameron got a four-year ban, have they? No, mate, no, no, not at all. <laughs> but it's one of them. They made an example out of him. I just think it's wrong. If he sat at home, then he'll look at something like that, like a Tyson or a Joshua or a White, and he'll even look at this Kovalev thing and he'll just be kicking himself, mate. I just feel like he's been hard done by, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I, I do. And what, what, what's the answer then? Do, do we have life bans? Well, it, the way I look at it, mate, it's like three strikes you're out, I think. I think either that or you have to, these big names, you have to make an example of them. Somebody like a Canelo, a Joshua Fury, they should be getting life bans, mate. I think, because end of the day, it's like, if you get a life ban, mate, nobody's going to even risk it because it's going to stop them from, you know, having a legacy in the sport. They're going to stop them earning a few quid. I think that's what needs to be done. But do realistically, do these um, testing companies have a backbone? to stand up to the promoters such as like Eddie and Frank and this one and that one. Do they do they have do they have the backbone to stand up to and say, no, we're making a stand. We're gonna we're gonna make a difference. They don't, you know what I mean? All right then Chris, here's a question for you. Which sorry, how many fighters, male and female, have come out when they failed the test and said, Yeah, I'm guilty. How many? No, mate. There's. I remember there's the one girl. I can't remember her name, mate. But there was the one girl. Misha Tate. I'm not sure. I'm not. I might have that wrong. Me, Misha Tate. Yeah, it was the one. Is from MMA, right? Um, she come out saying, um, yeah, I, I took it, sort of thing. But everybody else is always an example. Like you got kid, kid Galahad going. Well, my brother spiked me drink, and then you've got, then you've got like Dylan White saying, you know. Uh, it's all under closed doors. Everybody's got an excuse, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's wrong, mate. It, end of the day, you, you get caught red-handed. You just say, you know what? I, di I did it. I'll do my time and I'll come back from it, sort of thing. But you never, they've always got an excuse, haven't they, mate? And I think it's wrong. I really do. Look at Gerald Miller. Well, that, well that's it, mate. What, what did he say? I've been take, I was taking Viagra or something. It's just, it's ridiculous, mate. Yeah. Like Viagra, and he failed. How many tests did he fail? Four, four yeah. tests. And it on like, and like I've seen you say in the past, mate. Like, look at like Joe Miller. He's the only like twenty-three stone bloke throwing hundred and thirty punches around. Like, it's wrong, mate. Like, it's just unbelievable. You, you couldn't make it up, could you? He's superhuman. He's Superman. Superman, isn't he? Throwing that many punches around at twenty-three clem. Well, can you imagine, can you imagine what Adam Smith would say? He was signed at Matchroom. He's rough, tough, rugged. <laughs> you know, but it was on it. But see, that's the thing, though. It's like look at the hypocrisy. You've got somebody like Eddie Hearn saying, "I would never work with drug drug cheats," and everybody who gets um, uh, popped for drugs, they should be banned for life. But then he's after going down to Daryl Miller after he failed for a Joshua. You know what I mean? Like, is it what a hypocrite? You know what I mean? You can't say one thing and then go back on it. You know what I mean? It's just like I don't get it. I don't I really don't get it, Russ. Not at all, mate. It's well, wrong. Eddie Hearn. Uh made a big song and dance about drug cheats one weekend and I think somebody died that weekend as well on was it the patch day? I think it was the patch was it the patch day mate yeah I think yeah. it was weren't it? he died but there were no no to do with performance and dancing drugs I think he just died because he, he maybe he got an injury in the ring but yeah he took a conk to the head mate like a big 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 punch to the head and it, it just mangled his brain I think it was yeah, but a couple of days later, he were making White Povetkin money in talks and things like that. And Povetkin's been done a few times, hasn't he? Dylan White had a few incidents, hasn't he? And served bands, same as Povetkin. So, and and then he's making that fight where anybody who, who questions it, they lose the press access, don't they? And that's just that. Right. Could you imagine... Sorry, Paul. Could you imagine uh, Oliver Holt or... Any big sports writers for football going on behalf of a, a Fleet Street newspaper to a press conference and asking a question uh, to Jurgen Klopp for, about one of his players, why, why regarding a, a drug issue or something like that? And uh, could you imagine uh, Jurgen Klopp saying, "Oh, take his press credentials off him"? There would be hell to pay in the media, wouldn't there? But in That's boxing, it. everybody just puts their heads in the sand and just hopes it goes away. And it's been going on for far too long. And what, what will stop it in the end is somebody dying in the ring and, and it being a big cover-up about somebody, the opponent failing a dope test and it being covered up and then it coming out at a later date that that guy were on summer and the public screaming for him to be on a murder charge. 
that's what will clean the sport up. But until somebody dies in the ring, touch wood, they don't. That's it, mate, yeah. Until somebody dies in the ring, nothing will happen. Boxing's the only sport where the lions are the fighters in the ring. The, the promoters, most of them, 90% of them, are rats. And it's the only sport where the lions are controlled by the rats. That's what's happening. And it's in front of our eyeballs. And nobody's doing anything. But like I've just said, it'll take a death in ring before anything happens. Do you know what gets me, Russ? When you've got these guys and like, we're going to get on to Tebbit in a bit, but you've got people like Rob Tebbit, you've got Coogan Cassius, Miguel Sh- Joyce Phelps. You've got them sort of people around and, you know, they've got the access, you know, they get these interviews and, and they get these interviews like daily. And they just, all they do is turn a blind eye to it. They bury their head in the sand. And I, I don't get that. You know, I think it should be, people should know about what's going on. It's like when the Dillian White thing happened, um, nobody had, I think Coogan asked like one question about it and then Eddie and just shut it down completely. Why did Coogan not press for, you know, an answer out of Eddie, like something serious? And it's just like, it's all right, Eddie going, well, there's legal issues, this and that. We can't talk about it. But is there really legal issues? You know what I mean? Because there was so many going around saying, like, Oscar Rebass didn't even know that Dillian White had failed until, like, the day of the fight or something like that. You know what I mean? How, how can there be legal issues? It's pretty simple, really. Dylan White peed in a cup. They put it into two tubes. They tested one, and then the other one, that has to be tested now. They got one, one, one done very quickly. Now the other one, why can't they get that done as quick? Why does that have to go missing and it all disappear and all that? What, what were they taking it by carrier pigeon? Is it going around the world twenty times or something? What, what, what's got, what's happening? I don't get that, mate. It's like it went quiet. Um, he had the fight with Rivas. It went very quiet. And I think it was sort of like Eddie's just saying, "Go quiet, Dylan. We'll clear it up," sort of thing. And then. Six months down the line, he's fighting on the Joshua undercard in Saudi in December against Maurice Wack. And it's just like, it come out of nowhere, didn't it? I think it got announced in like two weeks' notice or something like that. It's like, how do, how can that ha- even happen? You know what I mean? Like, they're still inquisiting and asking these questions about this drug thing. It's all just been magically swept under the carpet. I don't get that. I, I don't. It's, it's confusing. Well, it blows my mind. Well, what you've got to understand is Dylan White's a pay-per-view fighter. He's had five pay-per-views, so they're going to keep. They're going to want to keep him out there, uh, earning. Tyson Fury, heavyweight champion at world, big draw. Joshua, pay-per-view fighter, and when when you've got Canelo Alvarez, biggest star in boxing without a shadow of a doubt. When you've got these sort of people bringing, do, bring, putting bums on seats and selling pay-per-views, who wants to rock that little boat? Nobody's a few quid, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? And that that's why uh that that's why it's it's going that's why it's happened basically. Uh Dylan White's test, it's gone missing. We don't know where it is. Uh days now, isn't it? Still not heard anything. Dylan White, I know you're watching. Where's your B sample? Also, can I just say Dylan White, tell your brother to block me off Instagram, Dean White. Who's Dean White? I know this is it. I, I mess. I, I I cut. He, there was a, a post from a few months back, um, just before the Dubois Joyce fight, and Frank had put something on his Instagram, and um, Dean White was calling out Frank, saying he had a hole in his head or something, a dent in his head, and I just said something like, um, "I was like, Dean White, when you're going to show people your driving license?" And he he, he just blocked me, mate. He just blocked me straight up, and I got one of my mates to comment on it and like call him out on it. And he just kept saying, like, um, it's like, if I see you, I'll crush you and this and that. It was just like, he's a bit of a weirdo. I don't know. Dean White couldn't crush a great. That's it, mate. That's but, it. But he's doing his thing, so we have to w- wish him well. Dean White, get a board licence. Come see me. But, uh, all right, then, moving on. Have you got any other uh, pressing issues that you want to talk about, Christopher? Yeah, of course, mate. Um, so... Obviously, coming up to summer this year, um, the sky the sky deal is going to be coming to an end. I just want to know what's your thoughts on it being renewed. Do you think Eddie's going to do a runner and go to the zone, or what do you think is going to happen there, Ross? What's your what's your thoughts on it? I think they'll probably keep the sky deal for Joshua, Eddie, and the other dates. I think will get shared out. We're already seeing Callasowlan moving into the mix, aren't we? That's um, it, mate. Chris Eubank don't want to work with Eddie Earn, but he wants to work with Sky. So what what but. What, so, Carlos and he's basically just an agent in it for Eubank, basically. He's just a middleman, isn't he? He's getting his slice of cake. 
They still yeah. get him on Sky. Eddie's still partners with Sky. I don't think anything's going to change. I, I hope it, they share the dates out with MTK, Sourland, people like that. I, I think that's what you're probably going to see. I don't think they'll give anybody else any dates. And that's just the nature of the beast. Eddie's still be getting a, a slice of cake off these dates that he's going to share. He'll still get some out of it. They'll still keep Sky uh, under the form, so to speak. But at the moment, Eddie can't fill the slots. He can't fill 20 slots. You've seen what he's saving up, haven't you? It's trying. It's, tr it's watered down, mate. Yeah, it's the product. But what happened to 50 50 fights? When was the last time Eddie put a 50 50 fight on? Eggington Cheeseman. That's it, mate. I, I, you, could, you could probably say maybe Jonas Harper. Jonas Harper, yeah. Which is a good fight. But realistically, on, on, a, on a, as a, like, say, a 50 50 as like a pay per view main event, the last time you could say really is probably Joshua Klitschko. You know what I mean? The, these sort of fights, the Eggington's, Cheeseman's, the Jonas Harper's, they go under the radar, mate, because they don't get the, the, the exposure as like these mainstream fighters do. So it's only us like people who actually, you know, we, we turn on the show at six o'clock and watch the full card. It's only people like us who will get to see these fights as if the casual fans, they turn on at 10 o'clock when it's chief support. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what what do you what do you su suggest a good fight then for 2021? What's your five fights that you'd like to see this year? Chris? There's a few, mate. Yeah. Do, do, do you want just British fights? Or you just want fights from around the world? I want fights, domestic fights, because there's not many people flying in and out of countries at the moment. So let's look look at the domestic. It can be world title. It can be British title. But what domestic fights would you like to see this year in the UK? A few you can make, mate. Well, there's the, the main one, which is Fury and Joshua. I mean, I think everybody in boxing wants to see that, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think another one I want to see, which you brought up, I think it's a great fight. Ubank versus Liam Smith. I think it's a great fight. Yeah. I think that'd be a proper tear up because we know Liam Smith can bang and we, we know Ubank can bang as well. Yeah. I think that's a good fight to make. Um, I'd, I'd love to see Callum Johnson versus Boatsy, but I think yeah. Boatsy's going to get protected. You know, he's making 130 grand a fight. He's making oh, a steady way. 160 a fight. 160, sorry, mate. Yeah. He's making it, you know, he's making that steady income. Um, he's he's keep by, by giving Boatsy dates, he's going to be keeping Joshua happy. You know what I mean? Because he's a Joshua man. Um, I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see Josh Warrington get out there. You know, I don't know who he goes against, but I think I think it's essentially he gets out because he's, he's had a year just sat on couch, really. I know he's, I follow him on Instagram. I know he's ticking over, but realistically, he's one of these fighters. You know, he's losing years off his career. He's just parts up, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I'd like to see Jonas Harper rematch. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I was just going to get to that. The Jonas Harper rematch. I think it has to happen. I think Steffi Ball needs to stop protecting her and get her in there with, with Natasha Jonas because I think. I think it was it was close by, and I think I probably just edge it to Jonas. But you know, this is the thing though with with the the judging's decisions at the minute, mate. You know, it's it can go either way, can't it? Do you think that uh, maybe Steffi Ball, look, looking at the other side of the coin, you think maybe Steffi Ball might just want to get as much money out of the Jonas situation as he can and milk it because he's not really got anybody, any other fighters. He's not getting anybody yeah. else out. 100% agree with me. Yeah, I think he's just trying to draw it out, you know, let it sort of, uh, as Oscar Deloy would say, mate, let it marinate. Let it, let it marinate and then get it down the line sort of thing. Maybe, you know, like when they can get fans back in sort of thing and have it as like a chief support on like a pay-per-view because it's worth it. I think that's a, that's a fight definitely that like, it deserves that sort of level because the first one was a tour, weren't it? Yeah. But it was... What's it going to take for Jonas Harper to happen? Is it going to be Natasha Jonas beating somebody on Sky and then when they're asking the questions, her turning around and saying, I don't want to speak to any of you, will I just make the Harper fight? Is that what it's going to take? The, the, well, the choice to come out of the pram because at the moment they're just, they're just blanking everything that Joe Gallagher and Natasha Jonas is, is putting out there. Nobody's giving it any airtime. Are they not IFL? None of these YouTubers that need to rinse their mouth out with TCP none of them or the media people are mentioning that fight. They don't want to give it airtime. They're not giving Callum Johnson Boatsy airtime. No, nobody's mentioning any fights for Liam Smith. Do you feel that these fighters are being wronged? I agree. Yeah, definitely, mate. Listen, I think, um, you know, we, we've, we've gone up, we've, we, people have had a dig at Joe Gallagher in the past, you know, with the crawler Lenares situation, you know, should he have got a rematch? Probably not, but I think they say it was signed already. 
for a rematch. We fight the manager as well as a trainer, Joe. Isn't it? We have to. That, yeah, well, like Joe, Joe's quite local to me. He only, he only his gym's only down the road at Bolton, mm. so it's like it's one of them. Like I do like Joe Gallagher. I think he's he's a good obviously he's a good manager and he's you could say he's a good coach, but does he's on paper does he look a good coach? You know what I mean? But. I, I think it's wrong that... Magazine these, they, trainer at year, mate, we're talking about. Here, only British guy to ever win it. Well, I, I, yeah, I understand that, though, Russ, but is it war- is it really warranted? Well, when the year he won it, everybody said, and I were included, uh, but maybe a, we're a bit of bias, that Peter Fury should have won it for the Tyson Fury beat Klitschko. But yeah. if you look at what Joe Gallagher had done at the time, he got kids' British titles and the gym walk, the... It was the, the hottest gym in wheel boxing at the time, wasn't it? So he's maybe got it for a collection of fights. What he'd done with all them kids, your Quigs, your Crawlers, your Liam Smith, yeah. Callum Smith, Paul Smith, Stephen Smith, all, all, all the Smiths, all of them. And, uh, you know, he maybe got it for all of the fights that he'd had right, yeah. rather than just Peter Fury. He'd only really got Tyson's. Yeah, the one. You know what I mean, at the time, and Newey, but... So maybe he just nudged Peter out there. Plus, I don't think Peter would have been able to go collect the award because he's not allowed in America, is he? So, <laughs> yeah, sneaking, but, sneaking on trains through Canada. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he got caught, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I see it on your channel. Yeah, no, but I think it, I just think him with everything that's gone on at the minute. I think Joe, by like, um, Joe Gallagher, he's kind of shot himself in the foot, unfortunately, because like he's got all these good fighters that like us fans want to see. We like, obviously want to see the Jonas. We want to see. The Callum Johnson get his shot again. You know, he's knocking on now, Callum Johnson. We want to see him in these fights, you know, because by by the time it comes around, it, it's going to be too late. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I don't understand why this guy's not getting slots for on shows. It just it blows my mind because he's such a good fighter and we want to see him. You know what I mean? Well, Callum and, Johnson had a life and death with Batavia, our only guy to have a life and death with him. Everybody that Batavia's fought is, is ran through him and he's, he's brought ribs, noses, cheekbones. Is give people bad headaches for months. He's a very, very serious puncher. And Callum Johnson got in there. He had nothing to lose. And he dropped him and he nearly pulled it off. And why why aren't they getting behind? Why can't they get behind him? Because if that had been somebody like Conor Ben or something like that, we'd have had Eddie Earn banging the drum, wouldn't we? But I, screaming. I, don't, I don't get that. I, I, I just don't get it. And I don't think it's because Joe Gallagher trains him. I just think they just want people to be on YouTube and hang out at the back of IFL and all them other YouTubers and be controversial and say this and do that and, 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 and maybe do a bit of arse licking around them and tickle their egos and all that. And they're, they're not really like that, none of, none of Joe's fighters. They just go about the business, don't they? And go on, train. They're good at gym, train, and go on. They're, they're not into all that arse licking, are they? And getting the things out. I don't know, mate. I don't know. That's it. I, the way I look at it is, when was the last time you saw a, a Joe Gallagher fighter on IFL, Boxing Social, this one and that one, like rimming? You know what I mean? Like it's just like you, you don't see it, mate. You don't. You don't see it. Like you said, they go to the gym. I can follow them quite a lot of them on social media. They go to the gym. They train. They go home. Spend time with the family, and it's rinse and repeat the next day, and it's day in day out, and they do it all year round. They live the life like. Yeah. When you see Callum Smith, Liam Smith, any of them guys coming out on on IFL. Like we, we do, we see with the regulars and just rimming Eddie Earn and just, you know, hanging out the back of them, as you would say. Yeah. You just, you don't see it happen, mate. And it's where you don't see Joe Gallagher going on IFL doing a Dave Colwell every week in, week out. So, what is it, a Sunday morning sermon? Call Dave Colwell Sunday morning sermon, yeah. Pen, Penfold doing a sermon. You don't see, when was the last time you see Joe Gallagher doing that sort of thing? Obviously, you get his interviews after the fight's had a fight, but you're going to get that, aren't you? You know yeah. what I mean? But when do you actually see it happen? I just think it's a shame because these fighters, like you've got your, like you've got your beef here. I mean, obviously we've just seen Carl Smith get a run out. Hello, but when do you see these like these fighters? They just to me they seem like they've been swept to the side and they're just forgotten about. In in other words, yeah, they they are, mate. And I'm starting to wonder if your IFLs and boxing socials, if they're not wanting to put Joe on the YouTube channel. Maybe they might have been told behind the scenes, listen, don't give them much airtime because they might end up saying, calling us out and calling Boatsy out and pulling Eddie Earn up and Sky about giving his fighters chances because Joe's obviously close to his fighters and he 
you, you look, you know, when you're a trainer, your fighters are like your babies. Glenn Rhodes once told me that. And you want what's best for them, don't you? And you, and you want them to get paid as well. And maybe Joe being outspoken, calling for Johnson Boatsy fight and Natasha Jonas fight against uh, Harper rematch. Maybe in, in pushing it on them big platforms, maybe they don't want that. And they yes, don't seem to be getting in touch with Joe to do interviews. I don't know. I mean, somebody said to me the other day, you don't see Joe Gallagher doing many interviews now. Is he being froze out? I don't know. There's something going on. Um, we want to get to the bottom on it, but why kids are not getting the chances, but yet other kids who are less deserving get their chances. And, and they, well, they get the chances. They get used and abused and then let go. Like Eggington. He had seven chances, didn't he, with Matchroom? And, yeah, and then finally let him go in end, didn't he, after his seventh defeat? But yeah. he got the mileage out of him. And he's only a 25-year-old, isn't he? It's disgusting, mate. Yeah, and he's in his mid twenties, isn't he? How many miles on the clock has Sam Eggington got? You know what I mean? And it's just like, um, like the like the way I look at it is like, um, these Joe Gallagher fighters, like the the good fighters, like like you said, Callum Johnson going life and death with um, Batavia. Like, why why was that rematch not pushed for? I, I just I don't get that. And we know what Batavia is as a killer. You, you don't see Canelo chasing Batavia, do you? No. You don't want to know. Because he knows that's that is a that is a life and death that mate. That's you know a hard I mean? fight for Canelo. It is, mate. It's, it's a very hard fight. I think it's a hard fight for anybody, mate. And yeah. we know how good Canelo is, and not just like skill wise, but he's got a chin. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Canelo, um, not Canelo, um, Golovkin hit him with sink, didn't he? And it, it didn't rock him at all. You know what I mean? So it's a hard fight that. Um, but you don't see Canelo shout like calling out for it, do you? No. I'd like to see Callum Smith go up. I mean, we see when Callum Smith is on about going up. Yeah. I'd like to see him get have a, one fight and then see if we can get that Paterbia fight on. Do you not? Do you not? Does that not interest you, that Russ? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd like to see Callum Smith against Paterbia. Yeah, I'd like to see. You him not roll the dice with him now. Yeah, I'd like to see Callum Smith. Now he's got a loss in his record. I'd like to see him roll the dice. Let him come back in a fight like a Blake Cabarello or something like that, a former, you know, champion, and that. Let him. I have a have a sort of a seventy thirty one in his favour fight. Let him yeah. come back, blow a few cobwebs off, and get over his injury and that, and get mentally right back on it. And then I'd like to see him against Bivol, Callum Smith against Bivol, or I'd like to see Callum Johnson against Bivol. They don't seem to be. I don't know what it is. They don't seem to mention Callum Smith Eddie, Eddie much. And let's not let's 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 remember that Sky invested in Callum Smith. He went through all levels. But then it was Callis Howland who got him his world title. That mate, yeah, he did, yeah, in the so, Super Series, yeah. Yeah. So, so what happened along the way for Sky to sort of let Callum Smith drift off onto another channel when they'd invested in him? Something's happened along that way, and I think it's because he doesn't hang out the back of people on social media, on YouTube, and stuff like that. He's very quiet. I mean, if it could you imagine Callum Smith if he'd have beat Canelo? He'd be, he'd have been the biggest star in world boxing. That probably would have would he have been able to handle all that? I don't know. It is skyrocketing to me like he's very uncomfortable around cameras, like he don't want to do it. He's very shy. He reminds mm -hmm. me of Yui, you know, Yui Fury and Savannah Marshall. They're just quiet kids. Do you know what I mean? Very quiet. But he were one fight away from being the biggest star in boxing, but he could still win a world title at light heavyweight. Anyway. I think it's time for him to step up. All that about he makes 168 easy. I never believed that, that any man could be that tall and make 12 stone. It's, it's impossible. I remember when I was 12 stone at five foot nine, uh, there were no on me. So imagine somebody at six foot three and a half at 12 stone. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it must make it comfortably because he's been fighting at that weight for a long time. So it's not like he's, he's killing himself to make the weight. But it blows my mind because, like, I'm six foot myself, and I'm I'm just above fourteen and a half. Yeah. So how how Callum Smith makes it, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? I just think fighters of that size, you know, get in fighting in them lower weight classes. It blows my mind how they do it. And I don't, I wouldn't say he looks like he's he's like gonk and he's like he looks like he's drained, but he must struggle to make that. He must do because you know the man that six foot three making that that way. It's just it must drain him. Well, I'd like to see Callum Smith fight at 175, like a Cab Cabruello or something like that. Just blow cobwebs off, and then I'd like to see him go at Bivol or Batavia, and I'd like to see somebody get behind him. But I think maybe it might be time for Joe Gallagher to look at working with the promoters. 
maybe a Sourland, maybe Al Heyman, maybe Bob Arum. I don't know, but I'd like to think that it's time for them to move on if their time's up with Sky. Maybe Frank Warren. I don't know. There's some not right why, why these kids are not getting chances. And, and other people are, but the people who are getting chances, they're fighters out there. The, your your Coldwell's fighters, Steffi Bull's fighter, these people, they're grateful for the opportunity. Aren't they? Maybe Joe Gallagher might seem that he's ungrateful, I don't know, or maybe Joe Gallagher's not going that extra yard to kiss Eddie Hearn's mm-hmm. arsehole, but he's from, that, he's from that era, that old school era. You know, when Joe Gallagher started out, they, they were, people around in them days we, were, were like your Carl Thompsons and your Ricky Atten's, yeah. Billy Graham's, people like that. They're from, it's from a different era, whereas your Cole Wells and, 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 and Steffi Ball, they're a lot younger than Joe, aren't they? 12, 13 years younger or something. There's a, they're grateful to get to break yeah. into it, aren't they? Whereas Joe, he's been there and done it and he's got the T-shirt kind of thing. To them, it's just another day in office, isn't it? Do you know what? Yeah. I don't know, but there's got to be a balance. It's got to be shared out. These slots that Sky have got, 20 slots a year, but all we're seeing is recycled rubbish. We're, we're now seeing, look look at this. Dylan White's fought Parker, hasn't he? Right? Yeah. Parker's been on Sky plenty of times. He's fought Povetkin. He's been on Sky plenty of times. Pulef, they're going to bring him back, aren't they? And it's like a merry-go-round of Chisora. I mean, but even the key every now and then, Sky Sports will put Chisora against Dylan White highlights on from the first two fights, and they're testing the public to see how many views these fights are still getting them. And the comment section, they're looking at all that. They're testing us to see if we put up with a Chisora against Dylan White free now. They've just both of them have just lost. Chisora's got ten losses. Dylan's but just been knocked out for a second time. Who'd want to see a third fight between them two on pay per view? How could they even sell that? I mean, what would they do? We've had Chisora spitting at people. We've had flipped over tables. We've had roll arounds on the floor. Yes, what we're going to see next? Somebody going to somebody's house and print windows through, or how could this? What script could they write to sell Chisora against Dylan White? Because in my opinion, it's a dog with fleas. You know, you had, you've had Chisora kissing people as well, you know what I mean? It's like, you know how they tell it, Russ, wouldn't you? You get you get the usuals, IFL pushing the boat, and you get it. You'd, you know, you'd have Matry put it out, White versus Chisora, and I think you've said it in the past, World War Three, and that's how they would sell it. They'd sell it as a tear up and a 50-50 for the fans, and it'd be on pay-per-view. But nobody wants to see it. I mean, like, that sort of fight, it's a casual fan's wet dream, you know what I mean? Yeah. But... People like us, we're not interested in it. Chisora, I, I mean, who actually cursed for Chisora? Why is nobody saying to Derek Chisora, you know what, Derek, you made a few quid, you know, you, you fought for a world title, and he, he did well when he fought for a world title, you know what I mean? He didn't just turn up for a few quid. Yeah. But why is nobody saying to Derek, you know, maybe call it a day, mate? Because soon he's going to he's gonna get hurt. I mean, Usyk, we're, we're hitting him for fun at times, mate. You know what I mean? Why, why is nobody saying to him, you know, is David A just going to keep re-spinning it as, well, he's, he's doing this core work, you know, he's doing this strength work, he's eating kangaroo meat. Stronger, it's faster, not... quicker than a speeding bullet. Exactly, mate. No, like, personally, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see Derek Chisora. And for out of respect for him, I don't want to see him get hurt. And I just don't want to see it, mate. It doesn't interest me anymore. We've seen it all. You know what I mean? We, we don't care. Why is somebody like Chisora getting slots? And somebody like Callum Johnson not getting slots. Like it doesn't it blows my mind. It really does. Yeah, yeah. and don't forget Callum Callum Johnson's and a Commonwealth gold medalist, and he's a British and Commonwealth champion, and he's world ranked, and he, he dropped Baturbia, but he's like he's the forgotten man, but yet they can wheel Chisora out with 10 losses. Uh, and let's have it right, Chisora nearly ended up in prison, didn't he, a few years ago? Yeah, I think so, mate. Yeah, I don't... He, he slapped that bird's ass, didn't he, that hard. Blood came up, blood came through her body, and she passed out or something. I mean, I've heard about spankings, but Jesus... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So he's a bad guy, Chisora. Derek, come see me. Do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, isn't it? It's, uh, I don't know, it's... Uh, they, they get behind the wrong people, Sky, don't they? they, get, they yeah. get, you've got to have a bit of a, bit of a story, haven't you? There's got to be a storyline. It's like WWE. It's a bit like the snooker years ago. They always had to have a story, didn't they? Steve Interesting Davis, Alex Hurricane Higgins. Yeah. They always... The spinning stories, but it is entertainment as well, boxing. But what about the kids that 
don't want to be don't want to read off a script, but can just go out and knock yeah. people that f out like Callum Johnson. He can punch like a mule, and he's the forgotten man in, in British boxing, I think. And I think it's scandalous what's going on, and we have to beat that drum. We have to be, and I'm not just saying this because Callum Johnson likes to go on boxing asylum and say his piece and this and that. And I just think he's a genuine kid, and and he's everybody's got a story. It's just how how you how you promote that story. That's, it, mate. That's how I look at it. But all right, then moving on. What else did you want to speak about? Now, I, I was just going to just add to that, Russ. Um, the way I look at it like this: who who um who are uh, Matchroom Sky's top five pay per view fighters? And you've got your AJ's, your yeah. white, you got your white, you got your Chisora, and after that, who do you got? Them are the three fighters who are on pay per view. They're they're on it. Twi- the, mo- before the pandemic, you have Joshua fight twice a year. You'd have White fight twice a year, and then they slip Chisora in somewhere. Like, is that all that is out of the out of the stable that Matchroom have got and Eddie's got? Why are these the only people who are on pay per view? Surely, like they can they can whip up and get people that the fans behind somebody like a Callum Johnson, like a, a Liam Smith, a Callum Smith. You know, you've got Josh Warrington who's been signed. He's just been signed from Frank, and he's not yeah. done anything. You've got Billy Joe who's getting on go getting slots on YouTube as undercars. Why why are they not whipping these guys up in in, in main event fights, 50-50s, and just slapping it on pay per view? These fights are what we want to see. Like why why can Eddie Earn? Not make Callum Smith versus Billy Joe. It's a 50 50. You know, nobody, nobody know who to back. And, you know, they're both in, it's in house. It's not like they're working with anybody else. I mean, I know Billy's an MTK fighter, but it's still, he's still promoted by Eddie. They yeah. can make that fight easily, but wh- why is it not, why are these fights not getting made? That's a pay per view fight, isn't it? What, Golovkin, Billy Joe? No, no, uh, Billy Joe, Callum Smith. Oh, Billy Joe, Callum Smith. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. But Golovkin, Billy Joe's a pay per view as well, isn't it? I'd like, honestly, I, you can, I might get some stick for this, but I'd actually quite like to see that fight, Billy Joe versus Golovkin. I really would. Well, Billy Joe's been calling out Golovkin and Canelo for six years now, but... Never fought him, mate. Never fought him, has he? So, uh, for six I, years, I like Billy Joe. I got a photo of him up there, a signed photo. I do like Billy Joe, but it's time, you know, he needs to kick on now, Billy Joe. Well, you we've know, been saying that for years, haven't we? Let's hope he does. I hope he stays with Mark Tibbs, you know, because I think under Mark Tibbs, I don't think you'll get this 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 daft Billy Joe. You know what we've seen in the past, like doing videos and stuff. I think under Mark Tibbs, you won't get any of that messing about. And if and if he does, I think you know Mark will probably just tell him to move on, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's they've got a good relationship, them two, and they'll do well. They'll do well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, all right. Then. What do you think about uh, Savannah Marshall? Honestly, mate, right? I'm I'm not the biggest nut when it comes to women's um, boxing, but I, I've got into it this year, you know, with the fight camp and everything. Oh. And I've seen bits of um, Savannah Marshall in the past, and obviously since, I've been watching the channel since early, like about Easter time, and I, I've always seen you like rated really highly. So when um, when she fought, she was on the Usyk on the card, wasn't it for Chisora? Yeah, I went when that was on. I, I made sure to tune in for it, and I, honestly, mate, I was very impressed. She's like a female Hugh isn't she? She's she's yeah. brilliant. She's yeah. brilliant, mate. Technically, very, very good. Keeps it nice, like tall, rangy. Yeah. And then it's just, I, I was quite, I was, it was quite impressive to see. And I think you'd agree with me when Peter said, like, sort of like turn the screw a bit and really like kick it up a notch. She did, didn't she? You know what I mean? She, she, she was no faffing about. She like sort of like felt her out, got into a stride. And as soon as Peter said, you know, sort of like flip the switch, take her out sort of thing. She went in for the kill and she got it, mate. She's brilliant. I think she's a great fighter and I want to see the Calista, the Calista Shields fight. I think it's brilliant. Why can't they make that fight match room? It's a good fight, mate. I think, and you know what I mean? She's already, Savannah's already beaten her once. So, you know, she's got a number, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's got a number. She's got a high. Do you, beat, do, you think she, do you think she beats her, Russ? Yeah. Yeah, I've asked her many times and I said, yeah, I've said, are you going to say something controversial? She said, no, I said, well, what what you, can you beat Clarissa Shields and she'll say you'll see she just says you'll see with a little bit of a grin on her face yeah so she she won't she doesn't slag anybody off her she's very very quiet but uh, yeah but let's let's hope to get that fight on because uh, it needs to happen yeah needs it does Clarissa Shields to me looks like she's doing a runner runner going for MMA yeah yeah she does the thought that you need to train your life for that you can't just make the switch I mean we've seen what's happened in the past when boxers have gone to MMA they've been Destroyed, aren't they? You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. it looks like she's running to me, mate. Yeah. All right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, Chris. You've been a, a real asset. 
to the channel today. Well done. I'm going to give you your porky hardcore badge. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching for a while. I thought I'm, I'm going to have to go on at some point because, you know, I'm like with my friends, a lot of my friends, like, I mean, I, I box myself um, amateur level and then my mates do as well. And we all talk boxing all the time. They say I'm very outlandish and outspoken with just some of the things I come out with because a lot of our mates like, you know, the Sky Fighters like, and they like, you know, like the the commentary on Sky, like they, they, they go mad when I say I, I can't stand Nelson and like Bellew and Macklin and Bean. They go, they go mad at me. I said, I just can't stand them. I can't stand them, mate. It's because the, the, it's the cringy arse licking that puts people off them, isn't it? And that's the thing it. about it is they know they're doing it. They must go home at night, look at me and think, God, I can't believe that I had to behave like that on TV. You know, Tony Bell, you never beat a champion. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say, no, because literally I comment on stuff on Instagram all the time and my comment always gets removed on Skyboxing, Matchroom Boxing. Always gets removed all the time. Always well, gets. Twitter. No, I'm Instagram. I'm not on Twitter, mate. I'm on Instagram. Um, but they, they're always. It's the same. They, whatever they put on Twitter, they'll put on Instagram. And I always comment on the on the sky boxing and the matching boxing. You know, like the page. Yeah. They'll put out stuff, and it's like they put. I remember when um, like re recently they um they were what's it called? They they put out um saying like. Who's who's excited to see Dillian White back in the ring? Because he's meant to be fighting end of February and he gets Povetkin. Yeah. And I said I commented on it saying, When's Dillian White gonna fight for a European title? And it just got removed straight away, mate. They just you know, they don't just shut it down, don't they? Yeah, they shut it down. They don't you're not allowed to go against the, the grain, you can't speak out. So Well that's know. it, mate. Yeah. I wanna see Dylan White fight, see fight Huey Fury. Yeah, he never mentioned Huey's name, does it be a good fight that? I like to see well, that fight. And what you, you said, it'd be a, it'd be a good fight. I think he skills him, mate. Yeah, he, he wouldn't be able to get. He wouldn't be able to lay a glove on you, Dillian. No, I don't think so. I don't think so now. But no, nah, mate. It is what it is. But listen, thanks for coming on. If, do you want to tell everybody what your Instagram handle is? Yeah, if anyone wants to follow me, it's Chris Burnsy on Instagram. All one word. Chris Burnsy. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah. Not just Chris. B U R N S. B U R N S E Y. EY, Chris Burnsy on Instagram. There you go. Get following Chris Burnsy on Instagram, all you Instagrammers. All right? Nice. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. I appreciate yeah. the time. Bye. Thank you very much. Send a bit. Bye. Well, that were uh, Chris Burns, a.k.a. Joe 90, uh, qualifying for his Porky Hardcore badge. Uh, well done, Chris Burns, a.k.a. Joe 90. Some good topics spoke about there. Uh, anybody who's wanted to come on the channel, porkycorner at mail.com. Uh, anybody who's got an issue with anything that I've speak about on this channel, email me. Um, we can have some back and forward, a debate. Or we can have a debate via email or we can have it on here. I prefer to do it on here. And uh, let's see what you look like because everybody's got plenty to say for themselves, but... You need to stop hiding behind your keyboard like that. Just hide behind the keyboard. So, all right. So, thank you very much, Chris. Enjoyed that. Or Joe 90, as I've just nicknamed you. And uh, let's crack on now. I've got a ton of snow to get off uh, my car, so... All right, thank you very much. Big shout out to Boxing Asylum and Innovation Alloys. Peace out.